Hi Yogi, it's Bri, and welcome to day three of the Aloe Yoga 7 Days of Gratitude Challenge. Today we're going to focus on heart opening, and my type of heart opening <laughs> might be a little bit more challenging than just laying there and opening the heart, but I truly believe that any sort of yoga practice requires balance of strength and flexibility. So we'll be working on opening the shoulders, the variety of muscles in the shoulders that tend to get a little bit tight. And that's, you know, all the way from the lats, the serratus anterior, the anterior deltoid, so all around. We're gonna get started in child's pose. Bringing your knees together for this child's pose, unless knees apart is your favorite and you'd rather go there, you can go there. Take your arms forward and your forehead down. Let your arms relax for now and the skin on your forehead to just gently crease towards your nose. Relax your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, the muscles that line the spine, and your hips, legs, even down into the toes. And just let the mat hold you up, bringing your attention to your ujjayi breathing. And as you inhale and expand the diaphragm and the ribs, you can feel the effects of your breath as your ribs press into your thighs. And the same but opposite on the reverse. As you exhale, everything draws in. Try a few rounds like that, inhaling, expanding, noticing how the breath can actually help you open your heart. Exhale, deflating drawing in one clearing breath together inhale open your mouth sigh it out now come into a forearm tabletop position keeping your forearms down elbows shoulders distance interlace your fingers now Keeping your hands together is a really great way to create a little more space for those of you who have tighter shoulders. Interlace the fingers, make sure the elbows are underneath your shoulders, and walk the knees back so that they're underneath your hips. From here, push down through the elbows to spread the shoulder blades wide, draw the navel in, and squeeze the elbows in towards the midline. We're going to take a few rounds of cat cows here. So first, taking the back bend, inhale, drop the chest down, let the sits bones rise, pull the elbows to the back of the mat, and open the collarbones. Take a deep breath as you push down through the elbows. Now exhale the opposite and round. Sits bones down towards the backs of your knees, pull the navel in. As you push down through the elbows, spread the shoulder blades and draw your chin to your chest. Let's do that a bit more rapidly. Two more rounds. Inhale, find the back bend. Open the shoulders and the heart. Exhale, round. One more, inhale. Really pull the elbows to the back of the mat. Exhale, push down to round, chin to chest. Then inhale to a neutral spine. Place your right hand down, then your left hand into that traditional tabletop position. Now, shifting the shoulders forward, begin to come into a cat position. Lifting the sits bones up, bend the elbows, and bring your chest and your chin down to the mat. So anahata asana is what we're going for here. But if this is already really tight for you, you can stay in this position. If you want a little more, you can walk the knees forward, lift the navel to protect the low back, and maybe take your arms forward to straight. So I feel a really great stretch across the front of my abdomen, even a stretch in the serratus and lats, which are the muscles that support the shoulders underneath the armpit that line the side of your body. Lifting my navel is gonna help support any compression going on in the back body. And here, I'm also strengthening all of those shoulder and back muscles. Take a deep inhalation, maybe walk the knees in a little bit more. Exhale, move the hands back underneath the elbows and walk the knees back until you lie all the way down onto your belly. Untuck your toes, take your forehead down onto the mat. That should feel really good on the back of your neck and sweep your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers, pressing the palms together. 
push down firmly through the tops of the feet so the inner thighs roll up towards the sky. We're not lifting the feet. Then inhale, lift your chest. As you exhale, lift your navel. Inhale, expand the collarbones. Hug the shoulder blades together and see if you can lift your hands off of your buttocks, really stretching into the front of your shoulders, opening your heart to the beauty around you. And exhale, lowering all the way down to your forehead. Now lifting up into sphinx position, so back to that forearm position. Taking your elbows slightly forward of the shoulders, your hands elbows distance and your elbows shoulders distance. Lift your navel and begin to pull with your hands so they move towards the back of the mat. That should begin to bring or peel your heart forward through the gateway of your shoulders. Keep rolling the inner thighs up. If you want a little more, you can take your hands a bit wider, push down to lift the elbows up, coming into a, a little seal position. Inhale, lift the heart, maybe even lifting the gaze. Exhale, back to the elbows if your elbows are off the ground. Make sure you're in that nice traditional sphinx position with the elbows underneath the shoulders, the hands in line with the elbows. Tuck your toes under as you inhale. And as you exhale, lift the low belly away from the floor to lift your pelvis up. Forearm plank. Squeezing the forearms in towards one another, spreading the shoulder blades wide, firming the inner thighs in as the outer hips draw in. Take a deep inhalation here. As you exhale, walk your feet in, lifting your hips up for dolphin pose. Now, if your shoulders are extra tight, you can keep your feet further back. If you want a little more sensation, press the chest back, let your head drop. Walk the feet in as the hips lift up high. Come high up to the balls of your feet as you inhale. And exhale, heels can press towards the earth. If you're tired, you can rest in child's pose. If you want a little more, you can begin to pedal the legs out as if you were in a downward facing dog. If you walk the feet in one more step, this is a great way, dolphin is a great way to really strengthen and lengthen the shoulders equally. Inhale and exhale, lower down child's pose. Great job. We're going to work quite a lot with the forearm position in the next few moments. So take a quick peek up here. I want to show you how I'm going to add in dolphin and forearm plank into your vinyasa. Okay. So from the downward facing dog, which is where we'll go in a second, you're going to take turbo dog, squeezing the forearms in, lowering the forearms down at the same time to the mat. Then from there, you're going to come to the toes, bend the knees and try to stay low ending up in chaturanga as you lift the elbows up. If you're looking at that and you're like, mm -mm, that's not for me today, then you can go straight into plank. It's a little more accessible. So from that dolphin, bend the knees and push through the feet to lift the elbows up, coming into plank, then lowering down through your vinyasa. Okay, join me, downward facing dog. It is our first down dog and I am super grateful for it. At this moment of stillness in your practice, you're a little warm already, you've opened your heart a bit more, take a few breaths of ujjayi. And I'd like you, before we embark on this fun yet physically challenging journey of dolphin in the vinyasa, to think about three things that you're grateful for. Could be this practice, could be your strong body allowing you to practice, or maybe even as grateful as I am for Aloe Yoga for putting this challenge together. Now let's try this. Look forward towards your hands. Inhale and exhale, bend the elbows, but squeeze the elbows in, lowering both forearms at the same time to the earth. Then come high up onto your toes as you inhale, bend the knees, squat back, and either come into plank or chaturanga through the vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Great job. Feet together. Look forward as you inhale to your toes. Bend your knees and either step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back inhale, exhale fold. 
Inhale, rising all the way up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, sweep your hands behind your back. You deserve it. Interlace your fingers, press the palms together. Open the shoulders as you inhale. Drop the head back and the chest up high. Open your heart to the beauty around you. And exhale, folding down. Coming into Uttanasana with the shoulder stretch. Weigh the crown of your head heavy towards the earth. Lift the sits bones high towards the sky. In yoga, an inversion is not only beneficial to the body, but it is said to be very humbling because your head is below your heart. And I believe that's exactly what gratitude does for our lives. It humbles us. Sweep your hands down towards the mat. Inhale to a flat back, straight arms. We're going to take a few fluid rounds of Surya Namaskar Sis, um, moon salutation. <laughs> Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step your left foot back. Place your left knee down. Inhale, rise up into Anjana. These are non-traditional. Inhale, lift the heart up high. Exhale, hands come down. Step back into downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Exhale, knees down, chest and chin down, butt up high. Inhale, slithering into upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Moving fluidly, building heat. Inhale, right leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, knee to nose. Step your right foot forward. Left knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, step forward, front of the mat. Fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, sweep your hands behind the back, interlace your fingers, press the palms together, inhale, open your heart, exhale, forward, folding down. Sweep your hands down towards the mat, inhale to a flat back, exhale, left foot steps back, left knee comes down and inhale, rising up, Anjane, one deep breath in, use the exhalation to plant the palms flat, stepping back into downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin down. You can take it to up dog or try the slither. Untuck the toes, tailbone to heels. Open the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Keep it moving, feet together. Inhale, left leg rises up. Bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, knee to nose. Step it forward. Right knee comes down. Inhale, rise up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, step forward, front of the mat, fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, hands behind the back, interlace. We're gonna move into round two. Inhale, lift your heart up high. Exhale, forward, fold it down. Sweep the hands down towards the mat. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, right foot steps back. Right knee comes down, inhale, rise up, Anjane. Palms come to touch, heart lifts. This time, exhale, right hand comes down underneath the right shoulder, left arm up towards the sky. Draw the shoulder blades down the back as you inhale, reach your left arm back, and if it's accessible to you, lift your right foot up and grab your right foot with your left hand. First, push the right foot into the left hand to open that left shoulder. Then exhale, pull the right heel in. Inhale, stretch your left arm back up, Place the right foot down, tucking the toes under. Lift your right knee up off the ground. Spin to the pinky toe edge of your right foot and flip your dog over. Keeping your right leg straight like side plank, push down through the ball of the left foot and lift your heart up high over the right shoulder blade. Inhale fully. Exhale, plank pose. Lower down, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, lift up, slither or regular transition, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg rises as you inhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, knee to nose. Step forward, this time crescent pose. Inhale, rising up, staying on the ball of your left foot. Left knee is off the ground. Lift your heart up nice and high, gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, forward fold, front of the mat. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. 
Exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Press the palms together. Inhale, heart rises high. Exhale, folding all the way down. Sweep the hands down to the mat. Inhale to a flat back, straight arms. Exhale, left foot steps back. Left knee comes down as you inhale. Rise up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, this time again. Left hand down underneath the left shoulder. Right arm up towards the sky. Then, drawing the shoulder blades down, reaching your right arm back, lift your left foot up, grab the left foot with your right hand. So first, push the foot back to give that traction to open the right shoulder. Then, keep that right shoulder open, pull your left heel in to open the quadricep and the hip flexors of the left leg. Inhale, stretch your right arm back up, tuck your left toes under, spin to the pinky toe edge of your left foot, keeping your left leg straight, right ball of the foot lands behind you. Push down through the left hand. Lift your heart up and over your left shoulder blade as you inhale. Exhale, plank pose. Lower down, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Feet together, inhale, left leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, knee to nose. Step forward, crescent. Inhale, rising up. Staying on the ball of that back foot, back leg, nice and straight. Inhale, lift your heart up high, palms touch. Exhale, step forward and fold, front of the mat. Inhale, rising all the way back up to standing. Exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Press your palms together as you inhale, lift your heart up high, and exhale, folding down for that final round. My shoulders are feeling so open. I'm feeling so grateful for this practice right now. Hopefully you feel the same. Sweeping your hands down towards the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, right foot steps back. Right knee comes down as you inhale, rise up into that Anjaneyasana. As you exhale, right hand comes down, left arm up. Now this time, inhale, rise all the way up into a standing twisted Anjaneyasana. My right arm is forward, my left arm is back. Sweep your left hand all the way to the outside of the right hip. Look at your right hand, flip the palm, and then begin to reverse. Lifting your heart up high now. Not only are we opening our shoulders, but also the whole front body from the knee up towards the fingertips. Inhale fully. Exhale, right elbow to your left knee. Hands to your heart center. You can always stay here with the right knee down if you want a little more. Right knee can lift up off the ground. Press down through your right elbow. Open your left shoulder and begin to revolve open. Twisting is our great ways to actually open up the muscles that line the spine, especially from all the compression that happens during backbending. Now from here, rising up, either with the knee up or down, back into that position where the right arm is forward and the left arm is back. Taking your right hand down, left arm up once again, flipping your dog over, spinning to the pinky toe edge of your right foot. Left foot lands, inhale, lift your heart up high. Now here's an opportunity for those of you who are a bit more flexible, you could put that left heel down, bring your right foot down, and turn your right hand to end up in Urdhva Dhanurasana. And if you're like, no, I'm gonna break my shoulder doing that, please don't, but <laughs> there's something to look forward to there. If you are in Urdhva, one of the most magical ways to open the shoulders here, push down through the heels of the hands, press the chest through the gateway of the shoulders. The hardest part is the transition back. <laughs> right foot or right leg back to straight, Bring the weight into the left hand to turn the right hand over, coming back into that side plank position and into plank pose. Now this time, go back to down dog. Squeeze the elbows in towards one another and slowly lower your forearms down. From here, you're going to take that vinyasa with me, so make sure that your hands are a bit wider than your elbows. Inhale to the tops of the feet, bend the knees and exhale, Chaturanga or plank from that dolphin position. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Great job, thank you for trying all of the funky stuff. And don't worry if 
you're not quite there yet, the great thing about these YouTube videos is that we get to kind of see what can inspire us and work towards it. And maybe you're someone at home who's ready for it. It doesn't mean you're a good or bad yogi. Feet together. Inhale, right leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, knee to nose. Step it forward. Left knee stays off the ground. Inhale, rise up into your crescent pose. This time coming into cactus arms. Now I love this exercise we're about to do because it's a great balance between strength and flexibility. Now with cactus arms, I want you to sweep your elbows forward, your palms back. Lift your heart up high, inhale. Exhale, now stay in the crescent position. You're just gonna spread the shoulder blades and bring your forearms to touch. Palms together, squeeze the elbows in, drawing the navel in. Two more like that. Inhale, open the elbows, scoop the heart up towards the sky. Exhale, spread the shoulder blades, round the upper back and squeeze. One more. Inhale, open, lift the heart up, maybe as high as you have yet so far. Exhale, round, and give it a nice squeeze from the elbows up through the fingertips. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold, front of the mat. I'm actually getting a good sweat on. Hopefully you are too. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. Exhale, hands behind your back. Coming back to that gratitude, interlacing your fingers, pressing the palms together. We have one more side. We're almost there. Grateful for our strong bodies. Grateful for the practice. Inhale, heart rises. Exhale, forward folding down. Sweep the hands down to the mat as you inhale to a flat back. Exhale, left foot steps back. Left knee comes down as you inhale, rise up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, left hand down, right arm up into that simple twist. Now from here, inhale, rising up into a standing twisted Anjane. Right arm back, left arm forward. Right arm all the way to the outside of the left hip. Look at the left palm, flip it, and inhale, lift your heart up nice and high, finding length in the left side body. Exhale, twist, left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Hands to your heart. You can keep the back knee down or lift it up, get it nice and strong, and begin to press your left elbow down and your right shoulder open. Squeezing the inner thighs together. To keep the hips squared, you want to isolate the twist right around the belly button. Then from here, if your back knee's lifted or not, doesn't matter, come back into that standing twisted position, either crescent or anjane, and then the left hand comes down to that simple twist, right arm up. Spin to the pinky toe edge of your left foot, flip your dog over. Feel free to stay here. You could even challenge yourself by lifting your right foot off the ground. If you want a little more, or a lot more, and you want to come into Urdhva Dhanurasana first, both feet down, both legs ready for that Urva position, then begin to turn your left hand so your right hand can come down, and then turn that left hand around as well. Don't stay in that twisted position, it's not good for the shoulders. Press your chest back, relax your head, open your heart. Let any of that fear go, and then slowly come back into that side plank position. Oop, that's not side plank, there it is into that flip dog as you inhale, exhale into plank. And again, this time, downward facing dog. We're gonna take that incredibly challenging vinyasa together. Look forward as you inhale. As you exhale, both elbows come down at the same time, dolphin pose. Then inhale to the toes, bend the knees. Exhale, either plank through the vinyasa or chaturanga, lifting the elbows up and coming back to downward facing dog. We're almost there. Deep breath in, breathing in those three things you're grateful for and letting go of everything else. Feet together. Inhale, left leg rises, bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, knee to nose, step forward. Crescent pose, making sure your feet are hips distance and width. Your back leg is nice and strong, reaching your arms up. Inhale and exhale into cactus arms. Elbows forward, palms back, using the elbows as a lever to lift the chest so that the shoulder blades press forward. Then inhale, exhale, spread the shoulder blades, drawing the ribs and the navel in, squeezing the palms and the elbows. Two more, inhale, 
expand, open. We all need balance. Exhale, find that strength. One more. Inhale and exhale. Then inhale, arms up. And exhale, forward fold, front of the mat. Take your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. Heel toe your feet to hips distance or a little wider. And go ahead and fold. Grabbing hold of opposite elbows, shaking your head out, relaxing your jaw. You can sway from side to side. Hmm. Drawing the navel in, lifting the sits bones high and just letting all of the muscles in the back of your body that just worked so hard, just beginning to release that tension. Mm, hopefully you're feeling more present in your body and in your mind so that you can begin to not only think about gratitude, but to actually feel it and live it on the mat and off. Take your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, little bend in the knees, hands to the hips. And inhale, rise up to standing. So anytime I work really hard on front body opening, back body strengthening, like back bends, I always like to use that practice to back bend a little bit. You're welcome to do any back bends that you really like, whether it be camel, Urdhva Dhanurasana, supported bridge. Um, I'm gonna do a hollow back against the wall, um, and I'm gonna do the variation that I find to be the most effective for heart opening. Now, if you're new to it, I want you to start with your fingertips or finger knuckles touching the wall, elbows, shoulders distance. You place your head down, you lift your legs up, then head off the ground, through the arms, and you sit on the wall making this question mark. You can do it with your knees bent as well, okay? If you're not new to this and you'd like to try another variation, this is quite advanced. I do have a hollow back um, tutorial, a bunch of them, on the Aloe Yoga YouTube channel, so if you want in-depth instruction, check those out. But for this one, I'm about a leg's distance away from the wall. I'm going to start with my forehead on my thumbs, lift my legs up, and then bring my head through to bring my foot to the wall. And from here, making sure to push down through the elbows and press my chest through the gateway of my shoulders. This is intense, but I also feel like it's one of the best ways to back bend without hurting my low back. If you want more, you can bring both legs to the wall. And if you want to practice Dvipada, Viparita Dandasana, both feet can come down and really press the chest through one of the deepest stretches for the lats and serratus anterior. To come out, make sure both feet come back to the wall, one leg over, give it a good push, so you end up back down. <sighs> I feel like my heart is wide open, and it can be scary, it can be really scary to open your heart, especially as you get older and you experience more disappointment in life, but don't let that stop you from opening your heart to yourself, to even if it's just the beauty around you through the yoga practice, allow the yoga practice to give you the tools to work through that pain you've experienced so that it doesn't deny you the beauty in life, okay? Um, we're done. <laughs> Lie down on your back. Hug your knees into your chest yourself a big squeeze, rock from side to side on the low back muscles. Hmm. Now you're going to take the soles of your feet together, open the knees, grab the pinky toe edges of your feet, pulling your feet up and towards your face, let the knees open out wide. I find this to be a really effective way to open up the areas and the muscles around your sacrum. Some of us, when we backbend, we overuse our glutes, and we externally rotate our legs, and that brings compression around the sacrum. So just open up here, opening the knees, pulling the feet down towards either your face or your chest. Good. And then inhale, hugging the knees back into your chest. Extend your left leg forward, grab your right big toe with the peace sign fingers, and extend your right leg to straight. 
a lot of backbending also requires strong hamstrings, lots of hamstring use and compression. So opening the hamstrings here should feel really, really good. If you can't reach the big toe, grab a towel, a strap, hoist it around the arch of your right foot, or even just grab your right calf and pull it in. You can take it out into B position. If it's not comfortable for you with a straight leg, bend the knee. Keeping your left hand to your left hip, opening your right knee out to the right. Then taking your right leg across your body into a spinal twist. If you want a bit more of a challenge, keep your right leg straight. Grab the pinky toe edge of your right foot with your left hand. Open the right shoulder and lengthen the hips away from the torso to find that length. Inhale back to center. Switch legs, pulling your left knee in, extending your right leg forward. Grabbing the left big toe with your left peace sign fingers and extending the leg. And if you can't reach, take a modification that works for you, whether it's grabbing the calf, the ankle, or using a strap, towel, shirt. And just opening those left hamstrings. Then right hand to the right hip. Make sure that that right glute stays grounded on the mat. Open your left leg out towards the left. And if that's not comfortable, bend the left knee, placing your left hand on your left inner knee. Finding some space in the groins and adductors that line the inner thighs. And then inhale back to center and all the way to the other side or into a twist. If you took that straight leg variation, take it on this side just to even it out. And then inhale back to center. One last time, pulling both knees into the chest. Take a deep breath in, breathing in gratitude. And as you sigh it out, let go of anything else that doesn't serve you. Extend your legs, taking your feet a bit wider than hips distance. Opening your arms out wide and closing your eyes. Feel free to take Shavasana for as long as it serves you. But give it the time and the space to actually serve you. When we practice at home, I do this all the time, skipping Shavasana is very tempting. You've got your practice in, you've got stuff to do. But take at least 60 to 90 seconds to just feel weightless to allow yourself the space and the time to rest. And you'll find that the ability to be positive, the ability to be grateful, comes a little easier when you slow down. I'm so grateful for you stepping on your mat and practicing with me today. See you again soon. Namaste.